हॅलो एव्हरी वन वेलकम टू दिस सेशन माय सेल्फ दीपाली वाडकर वर्किंग ॲज असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर ॲट डब्ल्यू आय टी सोलापूर इन दिस सेशन वील स्टडी पल्स ॲम्प्लिट्यूड मॉड्युलेशन पी ए एम ॲट द एंड ऑफ दिस व्हिडिओ लेक्चर स्टुडंट विल बी एबल टू डिस्क्राईब वर्किंग ऑफ पी ए एम मॉड्युलेटर युझिंग इमिटर फॉलोअर सर्किट स्टुडंट विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन वर्किंग ऑफ पी एम डी मॉड्युलेटर सर्किट the pulse amplitude modulation it is the type of analog modulation in which the amplitude of train of pulses changes according to the amplitude of modulating signal here two types of pm signal one is a double polarity signal in which positive as well as negative uh, levels are present and another is a single polarity or we can say it has a unipolar pam in which one sufficient dc biasing is inverted with the signal so that the signal uh, or train of pulses uh, having the only positive levels we'll see the block diagram of pm modulator in the pm modulator the continuous time signal is given to the multiplier the another input to the multiplier that is the train of pulses the amplitude and frequency of train of pulses is adjusted according to the sampling theorem and the at the output of multiplier we get a pm signal now we'll see in detail the pm modulator circuit using emitter follower so this is the circuit diagram for emitter follower pm modulator circuit in this circuit the transistor circuit is used here the input is given to the base of the transistor the input signal is a continuous time signal we can say this signal as a modulating signal the another input to the base of transistor that is nothing but train of pulses which is nothing but clock signal here the clock frequency is nothing but sampling frequency and the amplitude of clock signal is adjusted such that the higher level is at zero hold and its level uh, lower level is at some negative voltage which is sufficient to bring this transistor in a cut off region the output of this circuit is taken across the emitter next during high clock pulse to the base when the high clock pulse is given to the base of this transistor then at that time the positive voltage is get applied to the base of this transistor okay so when we apply the positive voltage to the base of any transistor then at that time this transistor works in a saturation region okay so due to this this transistor act as on switch and the input current flows through the output through the emitter so here the input current is present across the output for that time period so we can say that here the output follows the input so here the circuit behaves like a emitter follower circuit where the output follows the input when the input signal is low clock pulse at that time the negative voltage is get applied to the base of the transistor and due to this this transistor works here in a cut off region okay and when the transistor works in a cut off region at that time the transistor act as a off switch okay so the output here which is present that output is a zero so in this way when we give any continuous time signal input to the base and another input that is nothing but train of clock pulse then we get across the emitter of the transistor that is nothing but pm signal now next next pulse amplitude modulation demodulator in the demodulation it is the process of extracting modulating signal from a modulated signal okay so in the pm demodulator the pm signal is given input and across the output 
we get a continuous wave signal that is the original signal so this is the circuit for pmd modulator which in which the envelope detector followed by the low pass filter circuit okay so here two basic circuit one is a envelope detector and another is a low pass filter let us see the working of envelope detector circuit so this envelope detector circuit consists diode with rc circuit here the input pn signal is given to the uh, diode and we get the output across this resistor okay so in this circuit when we give the input high pulse uh, to the diode then at that time this diode works in a forward biasing mode okay means it act as a on switch that is close switch so here the capacitor across with whatever the voltage that voltage is less than the input voltage and due to this the capacitor start charging this capacitor charge through the load resistance rl here now next when we give the input signal to the diode uh, which is the low pulse then at that time this diode works in a reverse biasing mode okay so it act as a open switch that is the off okay so at this position the voltage across capacitor is greater than the input voltage and due to this the capacitor start discharging okay so this capacitor will discharge through this load resistance r okay so in this way we get the charging and discharging charging and discharging voltage across this load resistance r so this is the output of envelope detector now next circuit is a low pass filter in the low pass filter here we are using the op amp circuit uh, which is this circuit uh, pass only lower frequency signal below the cutoff frequency for which it is uh, designed and attenuate the higher frequency signal okay and the whatever the uh, op amp circuit is used here this op amp circuit amplifies this signal and at the output of uh, the op amp circuit or low pass filter we get this type of signal means again original signal so in the pm demodulator first input is given the pulse amplitude modulated signal then across the envelope detector we get the charging discharging means the continuous signal with some ripples and across the low pass filter we get the original signal that is the continuous time signal next the transmission bandwidth of any signal the generally the transmission bandwidth is refers to the range of frequency which is used to transmit the signal or the transmission bandwidth we can say it is the difference between the higher frequency and lower frequency now we have studied the pm signal we have studied what is the transmission bandwidth then the question is what will be the transmission bandwidth of pm pause the video for a while and think for the answer first let us see the frequency spectrum of pm in the pam first input is a continuous time signal its frequency spectrum is this in this frequency spectrum the maximum frequency is fm then the sampling function its frequency spectrum here this sampling function its uh, it is sampled at the frequency sampling frequency fs and third is a pam its a uh, combination of these two spectrum that is the pm spectrum in the pm spectrum this type of spectrum is for a rectangular pulse okay so the rectangular pulse uh, spectrum continuous time spectrum and sampling function its combination that is nothing but spectrum frequency spectrum of pm okay and this is like this now in the pam 
if tau is a time duration then in that case this tau or time duration of this pam is less than very less as compared to the sampling time period okay but the sampling frequency is always greater than equal to twice fm so this is according to the sampling theorem okay and this sampling frequency and the sampling period its relation is fs is uh, equal to 1 by ts okay so we can say that the 1 by ts is greater than equal to twice of fm okay so we can write this equation as ts is less than equal to 1 by 2 fm so by using both these equation we can say that the tau is less than ts and ts is less than equal to 1 by 2 fm in the pam if the time duration for on and off time pulses is same then in that case the maximum frequency of pam f max is less than equal to 1 by tau plus tau that is for time duration for on pulse uh, plus time duration for off pulse so it becomes equal to 1 by 2 tau then the bandwidth required is always greater than equal to maximum frequency then you can say that the bandwidth required is always greater than equal to maximum frequency but the maximum frequency is equal to 1 by 2 tau okay hence the bandwidth always greater than equal to 1 by 2 tau we know that the tau is less than 1 by 2 fm so we can say that the bandwidth is greater than 1 by 2 tau and it is again greater than fm so finally we can say that the bandwidth is greater than fm so the transmission bandwidth for pam is greater than fm fm is nothing but pre maximum frequency of modulating signal these are the references Thank you.